Angela and Michael are already in talks of getting a freaking divorce. Oh my god, you guys, 90 Fiance, the new season of 90 Fiance, Happily Ever After was on not so long ago, and this season's already freaking unbelievable. If you don't already know, Angela and Michael, the infamous Angela and Michael, they already got married about a year or so ago in Nigeria, and now they're already talking about getting a freaking divorce. So, so much stuff went down. Let's not waste any time. Here is the scoop. Like I said, Angela, Michael, we gotta see Michael. He's still in Nigeria. He cannot come to America because of the pandemic, and he was talking to his family. He was holding a baby. It was the dumbest scene. It's like he was randomly just holding a baby, you know, okay, he was so happy, blah, blah, blah. Everyone loves Michael. Michael and his family came over to Michael and said, if Angela can't give you a baby, you have to leave her. And then Michael was like, oh yeah, no, definitely. If she can't give me a baby, I will divorce her. I'm like, what the, what the, what the, what? They have gone to a doctor, several doctors, and several different doctors basically said word for word, Angela, you cannot have a baby. And Michael knew that and still married her. And now Oh, you're still talking about possibly divorcing her if she cannot have a baby. It's the most ridiculous thing ever that it's like, okay, is this fake? Is Michael faking drama? Or is he really just think that Angela at 50 some years old is going to have a baby? So I can't believe it. Completely unbelievable. So yes, Michael, he's talking about getting a divorce if she can't have a kid. And then Angela, she did an interview with, I want to say Entertainment Tonight, not very long, like very, very, very very recent and I think she was kind of spilling some beans that she should not have spilled because she even said I probably shouldn't say this but she was like you know I was even contemplating divorce and she goes we were still kind of like up in the air she goes there was some stuff that went down that was like you know we were really seriously talking about getting a real divorce and still to this day I believe Michael is still in Nigeria which that is that's kind of honestly it's getting ridiculous now they are married he should be able to come to America the borders are open I'm pretty confident we saw with another 90 fiance couple, Benjamin and Akini. Akini came to America very, like, a couple weeks ago. So, you know, it's the same thing with Michael. Michael should be able to come here kind of ridiculous, but geez, it doesn't look like if he comes or not, their marriage is going to be lasting very long. So yes, Angela and Michael's marriage is already just completely, probably pretty close to ending anyway, but yeah, we got to see them both. Angela is now getting ready for her weight loss procedure, which you don't already know. She already got it. I'll try to post a picture right there if I have one. She looks amazing, but don't get me wrong. Her mouth is still very, very, very large. Her stomach might've got a little smaller, but her mouth is still ginormously huge because she never shuts up. And so she was babbling about this, that, and the other. Michael, he didn't want her to get it. Now, at first he was saying, I don't want you to get this procedure because it could be dangerous. You know, who knows what'll happen. But then he started talking more and he's, now he's saying, well, geez, you know, what if other younger men start kind of trying to talk to you? It's like, wait, what is so, what is this, Michael? Is it you're scared for her? Or is it because you're afraid guys are gonna start flirting with her? So that was just a complete joke too. But we gotta see, they were going back and forth. Angela ends up going to Beverly Hills. She's gonna meet with the doctor. And the dumbest thing is when she's doing her confessional interviews, you can see she already had the procedure. So she lost the weight. She's looking amazing. She's doing well. But her marriage with Michael, that is a little bit kind of teeter-tottery, not looking so great. But let's move on because we saw so many more. Oh my God, we saw so many more couples. We have to start off with one of the most bizarre situations I have ever seen on this show. It was either freaking scripted as crap or this guy is so unbelievably entitled, and that would be Elizabeth and Andre. I know I'm not the biggest, I'm just, they kind of annoy me. And Elizabeth, she's just there. Elizabeth's thing with me, honestly, is it, it seems like she's constantly acting. Like I've watched, if you don't already know, Elizabeth, she is an actress and she's been in a couple of movies and, and I've seen one of the movie, the trailer, and it's like her acting in that movie is like the exact same of her acting or being normal in 90 Day Fiance. So I'm kind of like, huh, is she just acting in the show too? Cause it seems pretty freaking fake. So she's just there, no comment, whatever. We got to see her, they're doing a apparently pretty well. Uh, the majority of it was with Andre. Andre got his real estate license. So I don't know, is he gonna start selling real estate? I don't really know what that means. He just said, I got my license. I'm shooting for the stars. We're shooting for seven figures, which I guess that'd be what, a million bucks a year plus? He goes, we're gonna get seven figures. We're gonna freaking do this thing. He didn't really say what the path was to that though, but he was talking to Elizabeth. She was
was happy for him. And then Elizabeth and Andre were with Elizabeth's family, and they were talking. This is this, now this is where it got really stupid. They were talking with them because Andre said he wants to start his own business, and he can't do it on his own, and he needs Elizabeth's dad to give him a loan. Now, not a loan for say I don't know a thousand bucks, couple grand, ten grand, even maybe maybe let's even say twenty five grand. No, 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 no. Andre said he wants a loan from Elizabeth's dad for a hundred thousand dollars. And I heard that and I was just like, once again, this is either super fake or the guy is a complete entitled idiot. Why on earth should Elizabeth's dad ever give this idiot a hundred thousand dollars? I don't care if he's planning on paying it back or not. Dude, get a freaking job. So he would, that was the whole talk of their segment was Andre needs to go talk to Elizabeth's dad and he's going to get this money. And Elizabeth and everyone was just like, you know what, dude? It's just, it's why it's not, not your timing. Go work a little, get your feet wet, and then maybe in a couple years go to, you know, even still, it's like, just at that point, use your own money. So he ended up actually meeting with, with Chuck, Elizabeth's dad. They sat down. You could see the dad was all happy. He was all, you know, oh my God, you know, Andre, he reached out to me. And I think they made it seem like, you know, the dad was like, they were kind of just going his buddy, buddy. Then Andre sat down with him and gave him the whole sales pitch. And you could just see Chuck, her dad was like, oh my God, he's trying to sell me something, which is always the worst. And then, of course, he goes, listen, I want to start my own business. I now have my license, which is like, it just doesn't make any sense. Because if, okay, I could be, I, he, he was saying he wants to start a real estate flipping business. I could start one. You could start one. A random Joe Schmo on the street corner could start one. You don't have to be a realtor to start a flipping business. No, 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 you don't. Um, so I don't see what he was talking about. Like that made no sense. If you want to sell real estate, you need a real estate license. But if you want to just go and flip houses, you can do a random Joe Schmo can do it. So I don't know why he was at making such a big deal of this license that he had. You could probably get better deals, I guess, if you're a realtor, but whatever. Anyway, he told the dad, his, you know, Chuck was so happy. Oh my God, good for you. I'm proud of you. And then he goes, by the way, I also want to start my own real estate flipping business and I need a hundred thousand dollars. And that's when and he was just like, dude, are you, what? Are you kidding me? And I thought, honestly, Chuck was just going to say, sure, because this show seems so scripted and fake. But he just said, no, I'm not going to give you $100,000. Why would I give you $100,000? You have absolutely no experience. And that's the funniest thing. It's like, you know what, Andre, you are definitely stepping over boundaries by asking him for hundred grand. But the other thing, too, is you don't have any real estate experience. Yeah, you are a realtor. But what experience do you have with flipping houses, fixing houses, all that kind of crap? None. So so it was just the dumbest, most frustrating thing to see, if you can't tell. But the guy said, no, thank God. And he basically just said, look, we can kind of work together. If you're happy with it, then and maybe in a couple months, years, whatever, and you've proven to me that you are willing to work and actually do things, then we can talk about helping you start your own real estate flipping business, which is still, it's like, dude, what he should do is now that you are a realtor and you're making money from 90 Fiance, you should take the money you make, go sell some freaking houses like a normal hardworking person, take that money. If you work your butt off in a, in like, you know, 10 to 12 months, you could probably have a hundred grand, if not even sooner. If he sold his face off in the real estate world within about six to eight, 12 months, he could have a hundred thousand dollars. I know that probably sounds crazy, but that is the truth. It's sales. You have uncapped commission, go work your face off. And then it's like, there's your hundred grand. So it's stupid. It's ridiculous. And the other thing too is the guy probably already has a hundred grand from 90 Day Fiance and Cameo and them doing ads. So it was probably fake, but I also, I wouldn't be shocked if it wasn't because I'm Andre just seems so incredibly entitled. But I am curious, so comment below if you guys thought that whole segment with Andre and the dad and everything was fake or not. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think. But no, 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 we did not just get to see those two couples. We also got to see Kalani and uh, Suelu. And if you can't tell, I'm still frustrated because we, basically the whole gist of Kalani and Suelu is this. They are still technic... I mean, they're, they're still together. Are they happy? No. They were talking about divorce. That was their main thing. They were they were planning on getting a divorce. It just it never really went through because they had the two boys. The kids kind of keep them together. I don't know if that's really good or bad, but they're still together. They're still living with her parents. They're in a god-awful spot in their relationship. They're very unhappy, and believe it or not, even though they're so unhappy, they're looking at buying a house together. And this is, once again, this is why I'm so frustrated. You want to move out, Kalani Asuelu. Asuelu got a new job. Now he's doing ride share and Uber Eats and all that kind of stuff. And keep in mind, they also get money from Cameo, and they get money from Instagram, and they get money from 90 Day Fiance. So they're not doing that bad. And it's like, you okay they were looking at houses one of the houses it was a beautiful house it was 300 and something thousand dollars 
And of course, they don't have the money to buy that. Of course they don't. But it's like, you're telling me that you cannot find a house to rent for God knows what, a thousand a month, 1200 a month, let's even just say 1500 a month. It doesn't be that nice of a house, but they could get a big apartment, a condo. They could, they could do for $1,500 a month, maybe a hair more, they could get something nice. I don't care what anyone says. Not a match, but they get something pretty freaking nice. But instead, no. They have to look at buying a place. It's like, if you want to move out this bad, and I know for a fact they're making enough money, freaking rent. What is so wrong with renting? So that was annoying in itself. I could not stand it because they were complaining they want to move out, but it's like, well, here's your solution, rent. But they're, no, 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 they're not going to move out yet. And of course, to add, you know, fuel to the fire, Kalani's sister, uh, Colini, I think, is she's actually moving in with them. And if you don't already know, Kalani's sister and Asuelu absolutely can't stand each other. So there's just more drama. So it just goes on and on and on with them. They're, they're not, they're not doing bad, but they're just, they're not doing great either. But they are, believe it or not, they are still actually married. And then we saw Brandon and Julia. Oh my God, yes, the Brandon and Julia we just saw not very long ago. They are still together. They did get married. And yes, they're still living with Brandon's parents. Now, this is a fra- Also, it's just, what is the deal? All these people live with their parents, and if they don't live with them, they mooch off them because Elizabeth and Andre didn't her dad like buy their house too. It's like, oh my God, all these people are freaking mooches. Paul and Corinne, it was the same freaking thing. Anyway, long, 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 long story short, the gist of it with them is this. They're still living with Brandon's parents. Julia is still freaking mad. She hates living there. But the, the interesting thing is we did get to see in the tell-all that Brandon actually found several places for them to rent. However, they were not up to Julia's standards. So that is kind of where it's like, okay, once again, is this true? Are they just cutting out the fact that Julia wants to live in a really nice place? Like, what is going on? So that was the whole thing. They were together. They're still together. They're doing well. Brandon's is getting a better job in the whole, you know, pest control business. He's moving on up in that industry, which is fantastic. Good for him. They went out to Vegas to go celebrate. It was, it was kind of almost like a honeymoon celebrating his new job kind of a thing. So they went to Vegas. They were all happy. Julia, of course, wanted to move there, which if you live in Vegas, I absolutely adore Vegas. I love Vegas. I don't know if I could live there though. But so Brandon was like, you know what? Vegas, and if you live there, it's not, we don't mean to be rude, but Vegas is, is 24-7, The at least the, the strip is 24-7, party, 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 woo-hoo, we're having a good old time, and Brandon was like, yeah, we can't live here, this is not real life, this is just, you come here for a couple days, you go and do God knows what, then you go back home, and I kind of honestly agree with him, now, now they could live, you know, off in a suburb, and it'd be fine, whatever, be like Colton, Debbie, and everyone else, but it's just not going to happen. So, you know, he was joking around. She wanted to move there. Once again, I feel like it was kind of just fake drama. They were having a good time in Vegas, and that was basically about it. She does have an interview to get her green card coming up, and that was a big drama too, but it's like, Julia, you're married to the guy. You're clearly not using him. You know, it's not, it's not like they're like, you know, Michael and Angela. It's like, come on over. You're fine. But she was kind of freaking out, kind of seemed nervous. She was like, you know, what if I don't, you know, what if the interview goes bad and this, that, and the other? It's like, Julia, try Trust me, you're gonna be fine. Not a big drama. I feel like that was kind of a little bit forced too. And then we saw Mike and Natalie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let, let me let me clear something up really quick. Everyone asks me. Everyone's been talking about the fact that Uncle Bo leaked like a month ago or so that yes, Mike and Natalie did split up. They are not still together in present day. Everyone is asking me what is going on. I heard that they broke up. Why are they on the show? This is what happened. Their segment was filmed in uh, maybe like October of very long, so October of 2020. Here we are. We are in April, almost May now of 2021. So this was filmed a while ago. So when they were filming, they were together. They were happy. Then if we go over to around end of March, that's when they split up. So I'm sure it's all going to be caught on camera, but they are on this season technically still together. We got to see them together. They were off in Seattle. I don't even really honestly know why they were there. I think they were kind of just doing a vacation kind of a thing. They were going around. They seemed oddly happy. Like it, it was it was almost like it seemed forced and fake because usually they're kind of fighting. They're not doing really well, but Mike, he was laughing. He was giggling. Natalie was, she was um, doing better than usual, I will say, but you can kind of see she had a couple things on her head that was starting to kind of get on her nerves. And it all basically just stems back to the fact that she wants him, Mike, to be wearing a wedding ring. So that was kind of a drama. For the most part, let me just say this, Mike and Natalie, 
At this point in filming, in around October or so, they're doing, we could just say, well. It didn't seem great, didn't seem real bad, they're just kind of doing averagely well. But then when you start to kind of uncover the layers, they have some issues. The first issue is the fact that Mike and Natalie did not ever buy wedding rings. And it, my whole thing is like, well, whatever happened to Amazon? Good old Amazon, because they, they, it was in the middle of a pandemic. They didn't know how to, you know, you can't go to a store, but it's like, dude, Amazon, online shop, but they never actually got rings, which I, I kind of get it, kind of, and Natalie wants her man to be wearing a ring, which I also, I kind of get that too. Mike claimed it's for safety purposes, he can't wear one, it could get caught in his finger. Maybe that's true, maybe it isn't, I don't really know, but either way, she convinced him while in Seattle, let's go to this little ring kind of a, you know, shop. It, it was more so like a spiritual, you know, stone kind of a shop, like astrology. Well, it was, really was, it wasn't, it wasn't a jewelry store by any means. Means. But they went there, they bought some rings. They were just couple dollar rings. They were joking around. They were talking to the woman who's working as, as the, you know, cat the cash register or whatever, and it was the dumbest, fakest thing. See, so much fake crap happened in this episode because like they were they were buying the rings and the woman was asking all these questions, which you know she doesn't give a crap. And so she was asking all these questions about this and that and the rings, and it's like, no, 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 I know I already know. You don't care, they're just making you ask because you're already on the freaking show or whatever. So that was stupid itself. But yes, we saw them together. That was pretty much it. They're talking about maybe going to see Mike's mom. It looks like they do end up actually going. And that's when, you know, Natalie and Mike's mom get into a gigantically huge fight which will be pretty fun to see. And that was about it, because we do have Tiffany and Ronald, but they were not actually on this episode. They are going to be on the next episode, Tiffany and Ronald, and we also have Joby and Yara, but same thing, boo-hoo. I kind of actually like those two, but once again, they were not on this episode. So 90 Day Fiance, happily ever after, but geez, you know, gee whiz, you look at the couples, Angela and Michael, they're not very happy. I mean, they're, they're okay, but I just feel like at the end of the day, will they make it? Probably not, because Michael does want a kid. I think they care about each other, but they, they, you know, Michael wants a kid, and Angela clearly cannot give him one. So they're kind of not very happy. Elizabeth and Andre, they're kind of just blah. Uh, Kalani and Asuelu, you know, need I even say? No, they are not happy. Same with Mike and Natalie. Um, Brandon and Julia, they're pretty happy. I mean, they'll, they'll definitely, I think, stay together, have a family, do all that amazing good stuff. And obviously, Jovi and Yara, they're kind of in that same boat. And Tiffany and Ronald, supposedly, they're planning on getting a divorce. I don't really know where they're going to go, but I'll tell y'all what, that was the the first episode of 90 Day Fiance, you know, Happily Ever After, and I'm telling you guys, it was pretty freaking good. Well, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you are new to this channel, or if you I don't even know, haven't already, please so help me. God, hit that subscribe button, hit the follow button, hit the share button, it helps out me and this channel so, 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 so much. Well, guys, I love you all so much. Thank you all so much for watching, and y'all better please stay tuned for many more videos.